такие же. We've only got the small one in one Monday. Will that be all right? Ah, oh, yeah, I suppose so, lass. Here, what's this? Canned... Uh... Oh, that's corned beef. I'll oh. get it for you. Oh, uh, them day trippers are hanging round you. It's already, I'll see. Aye, ain't it shocking? Oh. It makes you sick. Makes you wonder they've no better to do. Oh, look oh. at the crowds are gawking again. Oh, I've just been said to Florida they were at it when I came past. Well, they're a scandal mongers, that's what they are. Now, but morbid curiosity, that's what it is. I say, Jack, something to see you doing shopping. Got a list and all, I say. Oh, I've got a bit of everything here today. Now, <laughs> what's next on this baking pan? That's more to the baking pan. And you're not well, then, uh, Jack? Oh, there's no wrong with Annie. Mm. Only you know how things are at the moment. Uh, She's at Conceptor's busy cleaning up for her, and I'm doing Annie's shopping. Yeah. I am very well as doing it, too. Now, that's you, second. Oh, that's right. Uh, tobacco, Frank? Ah, uh, the usual, please, Lloyd. No, how much is this little lot? Well, that's 9 and 11, but never mind. I'll settle up with Mrs. Walker when no, I see you. No, no, I've had strict instructions to square up as I go along, so <laughs> I may as well do it. Uh. Oh, sorry, uh, any, uh, any news, Jack? No, not that I know of. It's a rum do all right, isn't There's it? your penny change. Oh, penny. My rum. <laughs> There's not much left when you go shopping these days, is there, eh? Well, now you know what the women are always on about, don't you? Mind, you don't have to tell me. I know only too well. Oh, that's all you can think of. I'm fed up to the teeth of flipping Chris. Oh, anyone would think you didn't like them. Well, I'll tell you something. I don't. At least we're not anymore. Here, <laughs> what's up with you two? No, oh, it's her. Uh... Strikes me you're both in a bit of a tis was, eh? <laughs> Nothing the matter with me. It's her and a man for crisps. A couple more packets and you begin to look like one. All curled up at the edges. As long as I don't look like you. Please yourself who you look like. I'm having something else for me dinner. Two cream oranges and a balm cake, please, Florence. Well, don't blame me if you get fat. Look, I've a minute to ask you. Would you mind not playing your records quite so high? You can hear it all down the street, just for the time being, that is. What for? Well, why do you think for, love? Jazz records are hardly the thing with what's happened at the Hewitts. Well, I know it's terrible for the Hewitts, but... Well, we can't go on moping forever, can we? I mean, well, life's got to go on, hasn't it? Hello. Hey, you haven't oh, seen Mrs. Tanner, have you? No, love, did you want her then? Yeah, and I've just been round to her house, but she's not in. Oh, that's funny. She's usually home about this time. Mm. Today is her half day off, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, but she doesn't have do some shopping on her way home. She should be home soon. Can't wait now, I'm in a hurry. Um, would you take a message for her? Yes, what do you want me to tell her? Will you just ask her if she'll come round and see me this afternoon? Yeah, is that all you wanted to know? Yeah. Oh. Hey! What's up? Well, I hope Elsie knows her address, because I don't. I do. It's 46 Percy Street. She's in Diggs. Oh, I better write it down, just in case. 46 Percy Street. Yeah. You're on your own, then? Well, for the moment, yes. Mr Swindley appears to have been detained somewhere. Is this the only colour you've got in this size? Well, we've got some more on order. Pale blue, I think. Are hey, you sure they'll fit uh, an eight shoe? Well, it says medium on the box, and they will stretch. All right, wrap them up, love. I'll I take a chance. I'll tell you what, I'll take two of these white towels, and will you see if you can order me half a dozen black ones? Oh, right, I'll just write it down. I, I don't know what can have happened to Mr Swinley. He was due back before Doreen went for her lunch. Black towels? You must be a dirty lot in your house. Most hairdressers use black towels. You have to when you're tinting. White ones get stained. I have to get a couple for the yard, the one I see me washing them so much. Is that the lunchtime paper you've got? Ah, there's no tin it worth reading, though. I was wondering if there was any more news about the baby. Nah, not a thing. Nothing definite, anyway. It says they're thinking of calling in the frogman to drag the canal. It says an awful lot in there, doesn't it? Them reporters, they've never been off the doorstep. Well, you know what they say, don't you? It's all in the public interest. Public interest? If that's all the public's got to read, they ought to be bloody well shot. Oh, do you mind if I just have a look at this little bit on the bottom of the page? Help yourself, look. Well, I've never heard Mr. Fairchild swear before. I suppose you can't blame him, really, under the circumstances. No. The police don't seem to have much to go on, do they? No, they don't. Thanks. Oh! The by-election's been fixed for Monday the 26th of November, it says here. Oh, is that the first you've heard of it? I would have thought you'd have been one of the first people to know. Well, I think Mr Swindley would have told me, but he's got such a lot on his mind, what with one thing and another. Oh, I do hope they find out something soon. Poor Conceptor. Mm, them balm cakes done half for you. Oh, Doreen, have you seen Mr Swindley anywhere? Oh, why should I, Don? Well, I'm a bit worried. He's never been this late before. Oh, honestly, you worry over nothing. He's a big boy now. He can take care of himself. Well, I'll leave you to it. Oh, do you still want your appointment for this evening? Oh, yes, I've been rushed off my feet so much today, I'd almost forgotten. 6.30? Oh, that's fine. Yes. Right, see you then. Yes, right. goodbye. Hey, what's up with you? Whatever do you mean, Dory? Well, lashing out in the middle of the week on air do. Have you got a man lined up or something? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. Oh, go on, you must have. 
Go on, tell us. Well, as a matter of fact, I've, I've joined a small literary circle. A what? A, a literary circle for the advancement of literary and cultural activities. What sort of cultural activities? Well, mainly plays and books. Is that all? Well, yes, we read various plays and poems, too, and then we sit and discuss them. I wonder you can stand the excitement. Oh, yes, it's very exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll bet you are. So I said to him, I said, Jack, there's nothing else for it, love. You'll just have to do my shopping because I've got to look after Conceptor. Well, I mean, it's the least I could do in the circumstances. It's difficult to know what to do, Mrs. Walker, isn't it? We all want to help, but really, what can we do? Oh, I know, Mrs. Lindley. Only too well do I know. Do you know, many's the time I've been sick with worry, wondering where our Billy had gone to. As soon as he learned to walk, he was out of the door and away. Ah, there must be a worry. Now, our Joan was just the opposite. Um, a tin of rice, please, love. Is that the mate she usually has? Yes, I know. She says this is the only one that Harry likes. Right, oh, love. I'll take that and a small cut loaf. How is Conceptor, Mrs. Walker? Oh, very much the same. I can only hope and pray that they find that baby safe and sound very, very soon. Because if they don't, I'm sure that Conceptor is going to have a complete nervous breakdown. Are you going there now, Mrs. Walker? Oh, yes, love, I am. As soon as I've got everything she wants, I'm going back to see if there's anything else I can do. Will you give her this from me? Just a little something. Oh, Florrie, that is nice of you. She will appreciate it. Not often I get a lunchtime paper. There's a paragraph in here saying that the police are considering having the canal searched. Oh, I hope they find him before that. Hello, Mrs. Walker. Oh, I see you've got a paper now. Uh, have you read it? Ah, they're not much further forward, are they? No, love, but when you come to consider, they really haven't much to go on, have they? I mean, nobody saw the pram being wheeled away. And that's what I can't understand. Somebody must have seen Summit. Oh, before I forget, Elsie, Joan Akers was in here and she was looking for you. Well, did she say what she wanted? No, she just wanted to see you. It's oh. her flat. Right, come I going to be saddled with her just because she was a friend of our Linda's? I don't even know where she lives. Oh, well, I've got your dress down somewhere. Hey, where did I put it? Oh, have I given it to you, Mrs. Walker? Give me what, love? A bag with some writing on. Could this be it? Oh, 46 Thursday Street. Oh, that's right, yes. Oh, dear, I don't know what I'm doing today. She didn't say what she wanted? No, love, she just wanted to see you, that's all. Oh, I suspect it'll be some of this photographic business. Well, I think I'd better be going, love. Now, would you mind if I settled up later? Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Walker, yes. Yeah, right. Thank you, love. I don't know, but by her face, I'd say she was madder to death. Was she? Well, she didn't say so, but she looked it. Oh, heck. Someone else wanting to cry on our Elsie's shoulder. Having me off on wild goose chases if I've got the time to say, hey, you better give me 40 fags. I have a feeling I'm going to need them. Would you like coffee? Dorian and Sheila prefer coffee. Yes, I suppose they do, love, but a cup of tea is just as nice. I'll go and put the kettle on. How is she, Valerie? Still upstairs, asleep, I think. She's making a cup of tea, will you have one, Mrs. Walker? Oh, yes, I will, please, love. And perhaps Conceptor would like one, too. Where's Harry? He's round at the police station. Apparently, Conceptor wouldn't rest until he went round. Oh, just to see if anything else had happened. Yes, now, I think I've got everything she wants. The fruit is from Mrs. Lindley. Oh, that's the kettle's nice. nearly boiling. That didn't take long. No, it's a new kettle. What do you think, Mrs. Walker? Shall we take the tea upstairs? Well, you know, I really can't see that it would do her any harm to come down, love. Being too much on her own is not good for her. Yes, I'll go take that. Thank you, love, yes. Would you like a cup of tea? I suppose so. I wasn't asleep, really. Harry not back yet? No, but he shouldn't be long now. Now, love, what would you like to have with your cup of tea? I've got some very nice sweet biscuits, or there's some savoury ones if you'd fancy something tasty. Me? Uh, yeah, would you like to sit down, Mrs. Tanner? Well, uh, I don't want to seem unsociable, but would you mind telling me what it's all about? I've, uh, I've had one of those mornings, you know. <laughs> Will you have a cup of tea, Mrs. Tanner? Well, I'll never say no to a cup of tea. Right, won't take me a minute. Hello, then. It's a cheeky little fellow. Does he always smile like this? Yeah, always. 
coffee in that new shop on Victoria Street. Yes, sir, love. I don't often go there myself. More in the pot. No, thanks, love. One cup's enough for me. You've uh, just got the one room, then? Yeah, it's all I can manage. It's not the ideal place to bring a kid up in, is it? Well, I've only been here a month. I come from the other side of town, half a mile away. Did you have the baby with you then? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't know you had company. I've just come back from my daughter. She gave me a tin of this here concentrated soup for you to try. Oh. Oh, he's a little love, isn't he? Isn't he lovely? Yes, yes, he is. Who's his mummy's little boy, then? Well, thanks for the soup. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I do go on, don't I? Put me near a baby and I'm happy for hours. It gives you the instructions on the label. She wasn't quite right, was she, love? How do you mean? She said, who's his mummy's little boy? She should have said, who's his mummy? He's not yours, is he, love? <laughs> What do you want lace gloves for? Oh, well, they'd be nice for evening wear. Well, so you think they're getting around the clubs, are you? Those aren't lace, but there is a muslin spot. Good day, Mr. Sharples. What's the do? Can't you talk on the telephone while we're about? It's a very private matter, Mr. Sharples, very private. I'd see. Well, come on, it's no good hanging around where we're not wanted. There are other shops. Uh, well, I'll come in later. I'll oh, more fool you. Is it the election that's worrying you, Mr. Swindley? No, Miss Hewitt, it's not the election. But I've come to the conclusion that there may well be a connection between the disappearance of Mrs. Hewitt's baby and that young woman who came in here about the baby clothes. Well, I did say that... Hmm? Do you really think so, Mr. Swindley? Yes, I do. I do indeed. I think I'd better have a word with the police. Look, look, the police are bound to catch up with you sooner or later, so why don't you just take the baby back before they find you? Lily, I'm I didn't... Oh, I don't suppose you did. You see... I am married, really. Only my husband left me. I just couldn't stand it any longer. We was all right, Brian and me, until he found out I was going to have a baby. Is that when he left you? No, oh, not right away, he didn't. He's got worse and worse. You know how it is. I love, I do know. I haven't seen or heard from Brian since last August. Just left without a message or a note or anything. And what about your own baby? Lost it. He only lived for three weeks. I've got nothing now. No husband. No baby. Oh, sh <laughs> there, Nibbles, there. Shush. Shush, I know how you feel, then. Look, I'm not so much different myself. I've got no husband, and I brought two kids into the world, and they grew up and left me. But as bad as things were, and they were bad at times, I didn't go and take someone else's baby. I didn't mean to take it. No, of course you didn't. You just wanted someone to look after that. I so. have looked after him. Of course you have. You can see that. But have you thought how unhappy his own mother is? Yes, Mr. Swindler, this information could be of the greatest importance. Yes, I realise that, sir, but under the circumstances, this delay might have been avoided. I say, yeah. Now, you say this young woman returned baby close to you on the day the baby was reported missing. Uh-huh. I say. Uh, could you give me a description of this woman? No, no, I don't want her exact measurements. General description will do. Early twenties, I say. Now, you could recognize her again. Uh, do you know her name? No, no, no. I've no idea what the girl was called. Yes, yes, of course I will. Right, Arvin. Hey, what's up with him? Still daydreaming? No, Doreen, Mr. Swindley's just been phoning the police. Oh, oh, I've just remembered. Mr. Swindley? Mm. Doreen knows her. No, who? The, the girl who came in with the baby clothes. Oh, well, Joan Akers. Oh, really, Miss Student? Oh, I, I am sorry, Mr. Swindon. It was with all the upset and everything. Joan what? Akers. Do you know where she lives? Yeah, 46 Bursa Street. Simon. Yes, Mrs. Swindley. Uh-huh. Right, Mr. Swindley, yes. Yes, I think that'll do for the time being. Yes, I will. You can rest assured. 
All right, thank you. Goodbye. Get a car down here immediately. We've got a lead on this stolen baby. Yes, a house in Percy Street. what the police will do. You don't think they'll send me to prison, do you? Oh, I don't think they'll go as far as that, love, but at the moment it's hard to say. What would you do if you was me? Well, there's one thing in your favour, love. You've looked after that baby as good as his own mother would have done. I didn't mean to cause all this trouble. But you've never done it. No, lovey, it's no good crying over spilt milk. Now, what we've got to think now is the best thing to do. Now, don't you think it would be better if you went quietly round to Conceptor and took that baby back home? I don't know, as I have a good face, sir, not on my own. I'll come with you, love, if you want me to. I don't know. I, I just want to do what's best. But, oh, she must hate me, and then the police will start asking questions. Look, love, it's far better you take the baby back before the police come round and find you with it as I found you. I wanted you to know. I, I wanted someone I could talk to. Just someone as could understand. Oh, I do understand, love. It's just that I'm trying to tell you what's the best thing to do. Well, I think you're both wrong. Joan Ake isn't that kind of a girl. Anyway, what would she want to see her baby for? I've already pointed out to you, Miss Lostock, that no one has as yet proved that she did, in fact, steal the child. You have said she did. Oh, I think Mr. Swindle is right, Doreen. Every avenue must be explored. Sorry, madam, but I've just got to see her. Oh, she's gone. Did you see her go? Well, no, I didn't, not really. I heard footsteps and I thought it must be her. It's only a minute since. Wherever she's gone, she's obviously taken the baby with her. Well, it is her baby, isn't it? We've reason to believe it isn't, madam. No. Hey, you don't think it's the one that's been stolen from Coronation Street, do you? I don't think anything, madam. I'm just trying to find out. Oh, hey, I never give it a thought myself. I mean, when she come here with the baby, she said her mother had been looking after it, you know, till she got settled into the flat. Did she uh, have the baby with her when she took the flat? Oh, no. No, she'd been here a couple of weeks before the baby arrived. Said she brought it from her mother's. Did her mother ever come here? Not as I know of. Did she have any other friends, you know, men friends like? Oh, no. No, she had no men friends, not to my knowledge. But there was a woman come to see her only this morning. Could that have been her mother? Oh, no, I don't think so. She didn't look old enough. Besides, if you ask me, I'd say she didn't know Mrs. Akers very well. This uh, other woman, can you describe her to me? Oh, yes, yes. I never forget her face. I can tell you exactly what she looked like. She was a little bit taller than me. It's all right, love. Conceptor! Are they reduced in price? Well, no, uh, they weren't, Mrs. Caldwell, but as you're one of our more regular customers, I think we could perhaps come to some arrangement about it. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, do you mind if I try them on? Please do, uh, oh. Mrs. Uh, we were too late, sir. Too late? Yes. They'd left before we got there. They? Do you mean there was somebody else involved? Well, we've reason to believe there is, sir. Another woman visited the house shortly before we arrived. Apparently, they left together with the baby. Oh, dear. Hey, I could only wish you to told us sooner. Even an hour would have made all the difference. Yes, I know, I know. I, I do apologize for the delay, Sergeant. Still, at least we do know who she is and where she's been living. You might keep your eye open, sir. You never know. 
She may come into the shop again, or even walk past it. If so, uh, let me know immediately, will you? Rest assured I will. I will. Well, come, some folk have it easy. Mrs. Sharples. Now, you needn't Mrs. Sharples me leather, when you haven't come to buy out. No, I saw your big black shiny car outside. I suspected you'd be gassing in here. Now, just a minute, mother. Uh, now, goodbye, sir. And, no uh, good talking to him. He knows now. I'd be glad if you'd keep in touch, sir. You never know. Oh, you haven't got it yet, then, haven't you? I'm sorry to tell you we haven't, madam. Oh, well, I'll tell you something, shall I? If you are looking for the Hewitt offspring, you'll need look no further than number seven, Coronation Street. How do you know? How do I know? Well, I wear glasses for reading, but I'm not blind. I've just seen it arrive. Thank you. Is it true, Mrs. Sharples? Is the baby safe? Now, you've never known me to go around carrying false tales, oh, have you? Oh, go on, is it? Who took it? Well, for your information, it was your friend Joan Akers and Elsie Tanner I saw knocking on Harry Hewitt's front door. Stop to think what you were doing. I'm sorry. Didn't you ever stop to think what you were doing to her? The scepter's been going on all night. Don't worry. Harry, please. Don't you see, love? If Elsie hadn't made her bring the baby back, God knows we might never have seen him again. That's not true, Mr. Hewitt. I loved him every moment he was with me. Yeah, maybe you did, but every moment he was with you was torment for us. Harry, please. I want to say something. I'm just glad he's back. That's all. Yeah, come on, sir. Just stay through that. Miss Akers? Yes, sir. You better come back to the station with the miss. There's a few questions I'd like to ask. So you see, it was really Mr. Swindley who solved the whole thing. A mm. brainwave, that's what it was. Yeah, well, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Aye. Thank goodness it's <clears> over. <throat> Still, you can't... Without feeling sorry for poor Jane and Joan well, Akers. Mm. From what we heard of it, she's had a pretty rough time of it altogether. Well, well if it's true, I suppose uh, she'll have to appear at the police station, poor lass. Mm. Well, to now, love. To now. Well, I think that's all for tonight. You may go, Miss Lostock. Go? It's not time yet. Never look a gift horse in the mouth, Miss Lostock. Right. Student and I will manage. Sure, then. Good night. Can I go now, Mr. Swindley? Oh. I, uh, I thought this might have been a good opportunity to drop the quarterly returns. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Swindley, but I'd arranged to go out tonight. To go out? Well, you see, Mr. Swindley, I've made definite arrangements to meet someone. I see. Could you not meet her a little later? Oh, it's not a her. Not a her. I, I would have been glad to oblige Mr. Swindley, but he's always so punctual. Is Edwin. 